it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a card for you using Lawn Fawn's Winter Birds Two Can Do It and Really High Five. So I've stamped those images out on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink. And I'm going to be coloring to match some pattern paper from the Rainbow Ever After 6x6 pad. So I'm going to tear out the sheet that I want to use as my inspiration and tuck that under my cardstock panel. So I am going to start with my birds and I'm going to color them to be sort of like a blue jay but not exactly. I'm going to kind of do my own Thing a little bit take a little artistic license but for the main part of their bodies I'm using B41, B52, and B45. I find that that B52 works really well as a mid-tone between the other two shades so that's where I'm placing it. So I'm starting out with that B45 and laying in some shadow down the back of the body on the underside of the wing and the underside of the tail and then blending forward with that B52 and using a little B51 towards the center of the face and also down on the belly. Then I'm going to do the other adult bird and again I'm just doing the main part of the body. I'm going to do the wings and also the belly on this one a little bit different and I will also color in the little baby bird with these shades. I know baby birds are often a different color but um, I just decided to keep them all the same because I wanted to use those springtime shades and not really do like a little brown bird or gray or anything like that. Then for their heads, I wanted it to be kind of like a blend between a really pale blue into a very pale beige. So I'm using E40 and B quadruple zero and kind of mixing those two shades together to kind of achieve what I'm going for. And I'm going to do the other bird the same. So I'm starting with that B quadruple zero and then blending over it with a little bit of the E40. I did leave a little bit of white space on this one and I preferred it that way. And then I went back in with the B quadruple zero and then I'll use the zero marker to just go over the transition and fade the E40 into the white. And then for the wings, I'm gonna go a little bit darker. So I'm adding in E43 and E44. I'm gonna use those pretty sparingly though, just at the very tip of the wings. I'll add the E44 first, blend out with the E43 and then the E40, and then blend into that super pale blue. So you'll see it a little bit better on this bird since the wings are outstretched. In my mind, this one is the mama in this little scene that I'm creating, but it could be either way. Um, so again, placing that E44 on the very tip. I'm gonna do the baby at the same time since it's super small. And then blending out with that E43 and then adding a nice bit of that E40, but saving some room for that B000 so that we kind of get that little bit of a bluish tinge to the um, transition into the browns. The nest I'm going to do in the same tones but go a little bit darker by adding in the E47. I'll blend that out with the E44 and then use the E43 for the highlight. And then I'm going to bring in some pinks to give my birds some rosy cheeks with R11 and R20. Just a touch of that R20 first and then blending the edges out with the R11. I am also going to use these shades for my little flowers. I'm going to color the tips of each petal with that R20, just a tiny little touch of that. And then blend that out a little bit further toward the center with the R11, but I am going to leave some white space. Um, I just wanted it to be really soft and delicate looking, almost like cherry blossoms, but they're not shaped like cherry blossoms. But anyway, you know what I mean. And then I'm going to add in R22 to darken up for that darker pink combo in the pattern paper. And I'm going to do the balloon with these three shades. So I started with the R22 down at the bottom, 
blend it up with the R20 and then use the R11. And I'm going to do some of the stripes on the party hat with that R22 as well. Then I'll bring in the orange, but it is very pale in that pattern paper. So I'm using YR02 and YR04. I'll do two more stripes on the party hats and the beaks of my three birds. Then next I'll bring in yellow. I'm using Y02 and Y06. I'm gonna put that in the centers of the flowers and also do the next stripe on the party hats. And then I decided to go ahead and color in the wrapping paper on the gift with these shades as well. Then I'll take a break from my rainbow to do the branches of my trees. And that is from Toucan Do It because I wanted branches that have leaves on them since this is a springtime card. And I'm coloring those with E51, E53, and E55. I put the E55 down on the underside since that is where the shadows would fall. The light would be hitting the top of the branch. So that is where the highlight will be. And then once that has dried for a few seconds, I'll go back in with the E55 and just add a little texture to the tree branches to give that bark some detail. Then I'm going back to my rainbow and the green in that pattern paper is like a soft bluish green. So I'm using G00 and G02. I did two more stripes on the party hats and then I'm doing my leaves. And I decided halfway through that I would do some of the leaves in just a slightly darker shade. So I'll use G03 and G02 for those and the lighter two shades for the others, just to give them a little bit of difference there, create a bit of separation. Then there's a little bit of like an aqua blue in there, so I just finished off the stripe in the party hat on the little um, pom-pom part, and then I'm bringing in V12 and V15 for the purple, and I'm doing the ribbon on the gift and the last little string in the pom-pom of the larger party hat. Then I'll grab a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and go over the eye of my bird and trim these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock that I die cut with the second of the outside in stitch rectangle stackables from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to create a sky by blending some Distress Oxide ink using the cloudy stencil. And I'm gonna start with pink at the top. I wanted to do kind of like a sunset sky. So I'm gonna fade from pink down to blue. So I'm just turning that stencil to create a different cloud formation and choosing where I want to um, situate that on that panel and then blending down. And then I'll turn it once again. And this time I'm going to bring in a purple tone. So I'm gonna go pink to purple to blue. The purple shade I'm using is shaded lilac. So I'll add a bit of that in. And then I am also going to add in a little bit of the spun sugar to kind of transition into the purple to make it look a bit more seamless and not like just three separate colors on the panel. And then the next one is gonna be just the shaded lilac. I'm gonna add a little bit of that shaded lilac up to the top corners as well, because like I said, I just want everything a bit more integrated into each other. And then the third shade I'm gonna bring in is tumbled glass. So I'll add a bit of that. I almost went in the wrong ink pad there for a second, but since I am transitioning, it would have been fine because I am gonna add a bit of that shaded lilac into the tumbled glass for that first transition. And then down at the bottom, I'm only going to use the tumbled glass just to kind of fill in that bottom area so it doesn't look too white. And then I will bring in some of the other shades here and there. Like I said, I just wanted everything to look a bit more cohesive and a sunset has different little areas of color here and there. So that's what I was trying to emulate. So that's how that's looking. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to do splatter detail on there or not. And ultimately I did decide to do it. And I am gonna use all three shades because I thought 
if I did it right, it would kind of almost look like confetti. And since this is going to be a birthday card, I thought that that would really suit it very well. So I've pressed each of those inks onto an acrylic block, added some water to them, and I am tapping that off the side of the acrylic block, being very careful to only get small little droplets. And I don't want to go too heavy handed with this. I just wanted it to be more of a soft look because this whole scene is kind of like a soft dreamy sky. So I'll set that aside to dry and once it has I can pop that in my misty so I can stamp my sentiment which I will do in Versafine Onyx Black ink and I'm using a sentiment from the really high five stamp set which says flying by to say happy birthday which I thought suited the birds perfectly. So I stamped that down twice to make sure it was nice and bold and then I will set that aside to dry. That ink does take a little bit of time to dry back. And then I'm gonna pop my card base in the Misty. I'm using speckled eggshell cardstock from Lawn Fawn and bubblegum ink. Keeping the inside really simple, just using the other baby bird, the yay sentiment, and some confetti. Although I will move that confetti around and stamp that down one more time so it's falling more evenly around the little bird. And then I'm going to go back to my pattern paper and choose another print to use with the inspiration piece that I chose at the beginning. And there were a couple that could have worked. Um, ultimately, I decided that the blue speckle really matched nicely with the colors that I'd used on the birds, so that's what I decided to go with. So I'm gonna tear that out and trim both of these down with the largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables. And here is where I made a little bit of a mistake. I wish that I had run the rainbow striped pattern paper horizontally across the card rather than vertically because it would have showed more of the colors that way in the final card. Um, but I'm recovering from quite a long illness. I've been pretty sick here for uh, about a week and I my brain is still not functioning to its normal capacity. Like I just make simple mistakes that I wouldn't normally do. And uh, this was one of them. You can see that once I add the focal panel on there, it covers up most of the rainbow colors. So I'm gonna to try to even that out a bit by adding a third piece of pattern paper, but because there's only stripes or dots in this pad, I am gonna run it the opposite direction. So I'm not doing stripes on top of stripes. I mean, I am doing stripes on top of stripes, but at least they're going in the different direction and I'm going tone on tone. Um, and I do like the way that that looks, but I still wish that the two pattern papers that were going across the card were swapped. So the pink were going vertically and the rainbow was going horizontally. But anyway, I'm moving on to adding my images onto the focal panel now. I just popped that up with some foam tape and I'm trying to figure out the placement here because I want the mama bird to be kind of flying in from that top right corner. So I'm gonna have that largest branch kind of coming right above that sentiment. And then I'll take the um, smaller branch and I wanted it to be kind of extending out right below it to make it look just a little more full because like I said, this is a springtime card and I just wanted there to be a lot of leaves on there and to look, um, you know, like that new growth that we see in the springtime. So I just tucked that branch under the larger one and then I will add my standing bird kind of right up on top of that branch over toward the left and I'm going to put the nest nestled down right above the leaves on the branch in that little crook there. I only added glue at the very bottom of that nest so that I'm able to tuck some of the images inside. I'm gonna add that little gift there and also the baby bird. 
because it's the baby bird's birthday in this little scene that I'm telling in my head, this little story. And then I'm going to have mom swooping in, bringing a balloon for the little party. So I'll add that string, kind of figuring out the placement of that. And then I can glue mama right over top. So it looks like she's holding it in her beak. And then I can add the rest of the balloon up on top of the string. I'm gonna make the string look a little bit shorter just by placing that balloon down a little bit lower so it stays within the, mostly within the edges of the focal panel. I don't mind if it sticks out a little bit, but I'm going to add the flowers to my tree as well, just to make it look extra festive and add a little pop of color. And I also did decide to color and die cut two little leaves. Those are also from Toucan Do It, which is where the flowers and the branches are from. And I'm gonna add one next to the nest and then I'll place one of the flowers on top of that. The other leaves I'm going to use to kind of cover up the separation between the two branches. And then I'll add the party hat, the larger party hat onto the dad's head and the smaller party hat onto the baby's head. I thought about putting one on the mom's head, but for some reason with the way that she's flying, I didn't like the way it looked. So I just decided to leave that off. So she'll get her party hat when she lands at the party. <laughs> Uh, to fill in the empty spaces, I decided to add a few clear sequins. I added three up at the top and two down at the bottom. And then I'll let those dry for about a minute and then I'll come in and fill in the holes with some stardust stickles just to cover them up and also add an extra bit of sparkle and shine. Of course, I couldn't just leave it as that, so I also added it to the centers of the flowers and the ribbon on the gift and the balloon. And that is going to finish up this card, so I will lift that up so you can see the detail a little bit closer and take another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below the video so you can just click on the drop down and select anything that you would like. And thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here with me and spending your time and it means a lot. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.